Throughout history, the deaths of a king and queen of England were marked in a huge elaborate funeral in which the nation stopped whatever it was doing to mourn. Still today, state funerals mark the deaths of monarchs. However, there was a number of traditions that date back centuries that are adhered to. One of the most prominent ideas during funerals is the effigy which depicted a model of the king or queen who had died. These were placed on top of the coffin and they were actually very lifelike and were dressed in the lavish robes of the dead monarch. But a number of these effigies still today can be found inside of collections and museums. But they are haunting images, almost like spectres, and they are shown to us as an insight as to what the monarchs of the day looked like before their deaths. The first Tudor king and queen to rule over England was Henry VII and Elizabeth of York. Henry VII took the throne following defeating King Richard III at the Battle of Bosworth Field during the Wars of the Roses, and he then married Elizabeth of York to unite the House of Lancaster and York, thus ending the Civil War. However, Elizabeth of York died inside the Tower of London following childbirth and her husband was heartbroken. Henry VII elicited a number of strong emotions that he had never de demonstrated inside of the royal court. But Elizabeth's funeral was huge, and the frugal Henry spent a large sum of money to bury his wife. During the funeral preparations, a lifelike effigy of Elizabeth of York was carved of her, and it was made from pear wood, and it shows Elizabeth's head and top half and also an arm. At the time, it would have been a full model of the Queen, and would have been dressed in the Queen's clothes, and this was then placed on top of the Queen's coffin. This would for many have been the first time that they saw the image of their Queen and the woman who was ruling over them. But in 1941, there was a bombing raid that hit the Tower of London, where many of the effigies were being held, and also the City of London, and the body of Elizabeth of York's effigy was made of plaster and straw, and this caught fire and was destroyed. But the effigy was then restored as best as it could be. Her husband, Henry VII, lasted a little longer on the throne, but his effigy is said to have been remarkably similar to what the king actually looked like. He had a plaster head created, and this still survives today, and it was said to have been what Henry VII looked like in his final years. He had shorter hair and a staunch look on his face of concentration, but the effigy was made based on a death mask that was cast of the Tudor king. This is why it shows a lifelike image of the king. Henry VII's funeral also occurred inside of Westminster Abbey, and he was laid to rest in a tomb that was created for him and his wife. And on this tomb an inscription reads, Henry VII rests within this tomb. He who was the splendour of kings and light of the world, a wise and watchful monarch, a courageous lover, virtue, outstanding in beauty, vigorous and mighty, who brought peace to his kingdom, who waged very many wars, who always returned victorious from the enemy, who wedded both his daughters to kings, who was united to kings, indeed to all by treaty, who built this holy temple and erected this tomb for himself, his wife and his children. He completed more than 53 years and bore the royal scepter for 24. The 15th hundred year of the Lord had passed and the ninth after that was running its course when dawned the black day. The 21st dawn of April was shining when this so great monarch ended his last day. No earlier ages gave thee so great a king, O England. Hardly will ages to come give thee his like. One of the most notorious kings of England was Henry VIII, the sixth wife Tudor monarch and the man who ex executed two of his own wives inside the Tower of London. Henry VIII's effigy, however, does not exist, and the funeral hearse that carried his huge coffin was said to have been huge. The procession was so large that a number of streets had to be widened to allow it to pull through the centre of Windsor by the eight strong horses who were covered in black cloth. On top of the coffin sat the huge effigy of Henry VIII, the man who had reigned for decades. The effigy was carved from a mixture of wood and also wax and it was dressed in hugely expensive robes and on the king's head was placed the imperial crown. This effigy was incredibly expensive 
and it had the king's crown on, and when the funeral procession rested for the evening at Sion Abbey, the effigy was placed under the armed guard and protected from possible robbers. Henry VIII's effigy today does not survive, and it has been lost to time. One effigy of Henry VIII does exist inside the Tower of London, but it's not the one used throughout his funeral, and this was created and crafted for the long-standing exhibition of armour, known as the Line of Kings. In this exhibition, Henry VIII was shown riding into battle on his horse, dressed in his armour, but this effigy was made centuries later, based on paintings of the infamous king. However, one of the effigies that has survived from the Tudor dynasty is that of Henry VIII's eldest daughter, Queen Mary I, who was of course also known as Bloody Mary. Mary died childless on the 17th of November 1558, and she was then buried inside of Westminster Abbey, placed in a vault on the north aisle of the Henry VII Lady Chapel, the mausoleum created by her grandfather. She was placed in a coffin, and a monument was later placed above the vault showing her half-sister Elizabeth I, who was actually interred in the vault directly on top of Mary. The funeral effigy of Mary I does still exist today, and the head and unclothed body are held within the vaults of Westminster Abbey, and they can be viewed today as part of an exhibition. But the effigy shows Mary with a stern look on her face, and it's noticeable that she has a small mouth and a small nose, and the effigy is not also the most flattering. The body of the effigy shows the Queen to have had a large bump or round stomach, and her bottom is also very large. This could have been crafted to show her looking more powerful and dominating when the effigy was clothed in the royal robes, but on top of her head was also placed a wig. One of the greatest, if not greatest Tudor king or queen, was Elizabeth I. Following her death, she was, as mentioned, buried inside of the same vault as Mary I, eventually. But she was, to begin with, interred in the same vault as Henry VII, her grandfather. During her reign, Elizabeth I defeated the Spanish Armada, and made a lot of changes to her country, and even sentenced her own cousin, Mary, Queen of Scots, to death seeing the Scottish monarch executed by axe within the walls of Fotheringhay Castle. However, in 1603, when Elizabeth I died, her funeral was huge, and there was a huge amount of mourning across England. The effigy crafted for her was on top of the coffin, but to help preserve it for centuries, it was remade in 1760, and then was restored later in 1995 using wax, and this means today it is still very delicate and lifelike. During the restoration process, a number of clothes which were placed on the effigy were discovered, and the corset and drawers that the effigy had been dressed in were then placed on display. These were some of the only clothes remaining of the last Tudor monarch, and the funeral effigy on top of the coffin had a similar look to the portraits of Elizabeth I, and she was shown to have been younger than she was in it. Today, a number of the Tudor effigies still exist centuries on from those kings and queens who ruled for almost 500 years ago. It's remarkable that these have existed and stood the test of time, and they offer a clear image as to what the kings and queens of the Tudor dynasty actually looked like. They were practical, as many people who witnessed the funeral procession would have not seen their monarch before, so they acted as an important symbol to show the people of England an image of their king or queen looking virtuous before they were consigned to history and then buried. Thank you for watching and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.